we surrender it all to you, Lord. We withhold nothing, Father God. Father, we thank you that you are such a loving and kind God, Lord, that we can bring our worries and our concerns to the altar, Lord, and we can leave them there, Lord. That your love transcends, Father God, every sin that we have committed or ever will commit, God. Every, every mistake, Father God, every wrong turn, Father God, that you have already covered it with your love. So we just surrender to you, Lord, and we accept, we accept that love, Father God. We accept the forgiveness of our sins, Father. We accept you, Jesus, the Christ. Oh, we just bless your name this morning. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Let your presence fall in this place, Lord. And as it falls, Father, may it dissipate every worry, every care, every concern, Father, that is weighing us down. And just release an atmosphere of praise in this place, God. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, God. Just lift your praise to him. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy this morning. We take a moment to tell you, thank you, Jesus. We take this moment to tell you that we love you, Jesus. We take this moment to say we are grateful, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, the sweet presence of the Lord is in this place, amen. Hallelujah, Father God, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning, amen. Amen, how is everyone doing? Good, amen, amen. Hallelujah, as we uh, come today, and it is Pentecost Sunday, amen? It is the 50th day after Easter. It is the celebration of feast. It is the time when God released his Holy Spirit upon those disciples that were in the upper room, amen? He released the Holy Spirit on them and they began to speak in tongues. They began to take it to the next level. They were able to minister to thousands of people who had gathered at the feast and God showed his presence. It was the beginning of the church, amen? The beginning of what we stand and we do today that we come to church and we worship God and as we celebrate the Pentecost may the Spirit of the Lord fall in this place mightily as he did on that day amen may we be endowed to speak in tongues may we be endowed to heal amen and to do all the things that God has commissioned and gave us to do amen Amen. It's just so good to see you all. I want to thank you all for all the beautiful birthday wishes and the birthday gifts. Um, I really had a good time. I just kind of chilled out at home. You know, once you get older, the party phase has gone out. <laughs> so I just kind of stayed home and just and just relaxed. But do want to thank you all. Uh, I want to tell you 63 is no joke. I was walking through the sanctuary Tuesday. And it was dark. Normally I'll come out the sides and I decided to come out from the stage and walk down there. And let me tell you, when I said I ate it, I mean, I, you know how you're tripping and it's just, you know, you know it's, you're going down. And I was like, I'm going down, Lord Jesus, help me. And uh, I started tripping. I caught myself and I tripped when I caught myself. Anyway, I laid prostrate for a few minutes on the, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and just God say, hey, God, I'm down here. You know, this knee don't let me get down. So while I'm down here, I'm just going to thank you that nothing's broke. <laughs> I'm going to thank you that I'm okay. Amen. <laughs> and I just gave him some praise. So a little sore hip today. So I'm going to try and stand still and be still. I got a little sore ankle and a little sore hip. But amen. God is good. But just want to just, uh, just congratulate all of our graduates. I know that graduation season has started. 
and I know that we have many graduates in the house and we are going to be celebrating our graduates at the end of the month so I'm excited for that great job for all of those who have persevered for those that are transitioning to us to college for those that are graduating from college for our, our grade school and middle school we are so proud of you and we have we are really working this year and hopefully in the fall we'll have some of our mentoring programs back up and running and doing the things that we need to do but congratulations to all of you all and I you know I just I just praise God for his grace amen and his mercy I am not worthy to be here amen Man, I am not worthy to bring this word to you, but God's grace and his mercy just keeps pushing us through. Amen. So we are excited. Uh, in a few weeks, you will be getting an announcement as we give our first quarter uh, review. So make sure that you're there. And then we have a very special gift on Father's Day. Bishop Clay will be here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So get the word out. Uh, the father of our house will be bringing the word uh, on Father's Day. So we're excited to have him come and uh, just be in prayer for him. He wants to come more often, but I don't pull on him because I know that, you know, he's had a few surgeries and traveling uh, doesn't agree uh, with his body as much, but he will be with us. So we're excited about that. Amen. How many of you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is just so good. Amen. Let's just give him a praise just for being good. God is so good. God is so good. And it just amazes me every, every, you know, as I grow older and older, I'm just like, you know, you just really embrace the goodness of God and are really thankful that the fact that, you know, you, you have the activities of your limbs, you can get up, you can move. And, you know, young folks, they take that for granted. But as, as we begin to age, we kind of like, thank you, Jesus, you know, <laughs> but God is so good. And I'm just grateful to be before you this morning. Amen. Just to bring a word. Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we just bless you this morning, God. Lord, we just thank you from every, within everything within us, God. We just offer our praise to you this morning, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come and celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday, Lord. And just be reminded, Father God, of the precious Holy Spirit that you gave us to lead and to guide us. So, Lord, we're just praising your name this morning. We're just lifting you up, Father God, and I ask that you just remove me, Father God, from this word, Father God, and let it just fully be you that is speaking to your people this morning, Father. Father God, I ask that you comfort my throat, Father God, I ask that you, you take away the jitters and the nerves, God, and just use me, Father God, to, to be the vessel, Father God, to bring forth a word this morning that will ignite us, Father God, as the, the flames, Father God, the fire of the Holy Spirit ignited those at Pentecost, God, that you will reignite this house, Father, to do what you've called us to do and become what you've called us to become. Lord, we love you this morning, and we can't give you enough praises so we just ask that you bless. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to start off with an introduction. How many, how many Nuggets fans we have in here this morning? Amen. <laughs> I, I checked the time. I said, let me make sure that what time the game comes on because I know people, that when, when it comes to sports, people attach to their sports team. And, and uh, so I've been kind of watching the Nuggets this season. I watched them last season too. See, I'm one of those, those fair weather fans. Like I'm always, I, I, follow, I follow the players more than I do the team. But I don't know, these Nuggets got me this year and um, just been watching them. And we know, you know, the game series is tied three to three. And so uh, today, you know, we will find out, uh, <laughs> you know, who the champion is going to be. But, you know, as I've been watching the game, um, I, I, you know, I watched the game, but I'm really like, you know, I just get into details and I was just noticing the, like, the fans of the game. I mean, when they were back, I don't know even where the Timberwolves are from, but whenever, when they, when they were playing, Minnesota. Okay. Thank you. That's the, you know, <laughs> but I was just noticing the fans and, and, and this, the, 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 the arena was just packed with jerseys and packed with fans and, and, and they were just, you know, routing, rooting for their teams. And, um, I just began to say, man, 
somebody made some good money off of all of these t-shirts that they, they, they wore because it seemed like everybody was adorned in these white t-shirts. And, you know, as fans, we really buy into our teams. We really buy into our teams. So um, with that being said, you know, we're Team Jesus. Amen? And we need to learn to buy into all that God has has given us. As I watched that series and I, you know, saw that the Nuggets were down, I'm like, oh, well, maybe it ain't going to happen this year. But the fight and the tenacity to, to raise up, amen, and bring back, uh, bring this series to a tide really talks about the uh, dedication that they had, the, the oomph that they had to say, you know what, it ain't over till it's over. And so this morning, as I'm looking at that, and you know, looking at the scenario, I'm pretty sure when, when they were down, Coach Malone was, got them and those boys in the locker room and said, hey, fellas, Look, you know, we are the champions. We are the winners. You know, reflecting back on what they did last season and saying, we can do this again. We, we have the power. We have the talent to do it again. And they came back with a vengeance. And so, you know, just as, just as much as they want it, so, do the, so does uh, the Wolverines. They want it just as bad. But it's, t t today we will see, like, who... Who has going, who's going to put in that extra mile? Who's going to put in that extra oomph to get to, get to that, that final and make, it, uh, and make it past this final? And so this morning, I want to just encourage us as being part of Jesus' team, amen, that we need to get ready, amen, that we need, we need a Coach Malone, amen, to, to ignite us. And we have that. We have that in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we also have it in the Holy Spirit. So that's why Pentecost is just so beautiful this morning because it is what ignited the, the disciples to move on, to press on, to go forth. Even after, after the uh, Spirit had ascended on them, these 11 men changed the world. They changed the status quo that, that Peter preached and 3,000 were added to the church. So it says something about being coached. It says something about staying close to the source that will help us get to where God wants us today. And so this morning, if you would just stand for me for a minute as, uh, we, as I read the scripture. Amen. Let me just make sure my throat doesn't go. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we will be reading from Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 and 20, we're going to talk about the Great Commission this morning. Again, that's Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And if I, I am so sorry for those that are watching online. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. And we love you. So Matthew 28, 16 and 20, it reads, Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubt it. But some doubt it. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord have a, add a blessing to the hearing of his word this morning. So this morning, we're just going to talk simply the topic is go. That's the topic of the sermon title is go. Because we have been commissioned to make disciples and Jesus commanded us to go. To go into the world and make disciples. So my big idea today is, is as Christians, we have been given the authority and have been commissioned by Christ to make disciples of people everywhere by baptizing and teaching them God's word. Amen? That we, we are team Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
And our mandate is to go into all the world and preach the gospel and baptize them and bring them into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We are to be builders of the kingdom of God, amen? We have been commissioned to go out into the world and to bring forth and produce disciples. So just a little bit of literary context, uh, background about this passage of scripture, we know that Jesus had uh, been crucified on the cross, amen, and that he was resurrected. And on that third day, Mary and, and the, the sisters went out to anoint the body, but in their going to anoint the body, they run in to, to a circumstance where Jesus is no longer in the tomb. And the beauty of it is, is that Jesus met them um, in the garden, and he began to tell them, if you look at verse 7, he begins to to instruct them. In verse 7, it's, he, he tells them that, don't be afraid, it's me. Now, can you just imagine, just, just, just put on your thinking cap for a moment. You were there yesterday. <laughs> you saw them crucify the Lord. You saw him die. You saw him take his last breath. You heard him say those seven last words. You heard him say, Father, into my hands I commend myself. You saw him. You saw the lifeless body of the risen Savior. You saw the lifeless body of Jesus, the one you had been walking with, the one who had been teaching you, the one who had given you promise and given you hope. You saw that lifeless body. And then the next day, or three days later, he's standing in front of you. Like, that just must have been a trip. <laughs> You know, to see that, that this man, this, this king, this Lord, this Savior had actually risen from the dead. Now, we had heard about it. They had heard about it, but, you know, the belief was, eh, maybe he will, maybe he won't. won't. But there he was, standing in the presence of them and encouraging them. So in verse 6, he says, um, he tells them to fear not. And he tells them, uh, he said, uh, I'm, I'm here. It's all taken care of. Now, the past three days, I've been handling my business. I've been, you know, defeating the enemy. I've, I've taken heaven. I've taken hold of, of dominion over heaven and earth. And so he says, go quickly. He says to them, then go quickly and tell his disciples this, that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See I have told you. So Jesus is telling uh, these, these women, these disciples, these women, uh, to go forth and go grab the 11. Go tell the 11 and tell them, let's meet up in Galilee, for I have risen, and I need to speak to them. I need to give them further instructions. And so uh, verse, we drop down into verse 16. It says, the 11 obeyed, and as they wanted, as they wanted to see for themselves, and they went to Galilee. I can imagine those ladies running in and, 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 and telling them, he's alive, he's alive, Jesus is alive, we've just seen him. You know, and they're just in there like, what? You know, how, how can this be? Um, and it says that um, in, in that verse, it says, the 11 obeyed as they wanted to see for themselves and went to Galilee. Now the 11 disciples, they went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And up on their approach there, up on verse 17, it says, upon seeing him, the group was split. As some worshiped in excitement, and some stood wondering, what is going on? What is this all about? So this means that there was more than one Thomas in the group. We hear of doubting Thomas. We hear Thomas just voiced it like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get a little more proof. You know, I, I'm going to have to touch the hands. I'm going to have to see the wounds. Uh, but it, it was, it was uh, that point of scripture is that they all went. The whole team went. And some worshiped and some rejoiced and some stood in doubt. But they were worshiping, but they were worshiping with one eye open like, am I dreaming? Is, is this real? Is this what's really going down? And so uh, it just lets us know that when we come to worship the Lord, that we should worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? 
that when we come through this door, we should know that we have a risen Savior, that we know there is a King of Kings, that we know that he was resurrected, that we know that he is the Holy One, that we know that he is Jesus the Christ. But we come in here and we worship with a doubt. And that's unfortunate. And I, and I tell on myself, there's some times when I have worshiped with a doubt because maybe something in your life just isn't right. Maybe there's an unanswered prayer. Maybe, maybe there's a sincere need that you need from God and you know that he can do it, but you doubt that he will do it. Maybe it's because you're just not, not doing all, you're not walking in total obedience to him. So that brings in doubt. When you're not walking in the ways and in the truth that he, he has asked you to walk in, that gives the enemy room to bring doubt in. But we're going to be some, some Christians in here, amen, that do not doubt what God can do. Amen? We want to be, be disciples that don't doubt his word. And so even, even in this, this situation, there was some doubt in the room. And in this, this passage of Scripture, um, there was just some hesitancy. They were just kind of hesitant to, to, you know, I mean, come on. If, 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 if someone comes to you and they were dead, you know, they were dead a few days ago and now they're in front of you, you're going to be tripping too. You're going to be like, wait, what, what's going on here? You know, what, 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 what? You know, you're going to be hesitant to believe what you're seeing. So they were uncertain. There was a, a, some hesitancy in there. And that word hesitancy in the Greek, it means it is pronounced, these, these, <laughs> I knew I was going to trip on this, ditazo, which means that they were hesitant. This means that they were worshiping God, but they were worship, worshiping God with a hesitancy. And that, that word or that, that verb is only used twice in the New Testament scripture. The other time that it is used is when Peter, uh, when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter asked the Lord to, you know, bid me to come. And Peter steps out on that water in full faith like, Jesus, I, I want to, can I come to you? I want to walk on this water. I believe you, God. I believe you. And he begins to walk on the water, and he's walking just fine in total worship to God. But then the wind blew, and the waves hit up on him, and he began to begin to get hesitant. He began to doubt. He began to look at the circumstances that were surrounding him. And so he began to sink into the, to sink into the water, to sink into the sea. And as he was sinking to the sea, Jesus reaches down and he pulls him back up and he says, oh yeah, little faith. Why did you doubt? You were doing it, you know? How many of us have been commissioned by God to do something and we're out there and we're doing what God has asked, called and asked us to do? And then something or someone says something. Someone hurts your feelings. Someone, someone throws you off track and you begin to look at what the naysayers are saying. You begin to listen to what the enemy is saying and that thing begins to get into your spirit and you begin to sink back. You begin to withdraw. God says he is looking for people that will stand steadfast to not, to not waver in uncertainty and not to be hesitant. And so even though they were hesitant, they still worshiped. When Peter and Jesus got back in the boat, they had a worship service in that boat. Those, those disciples were, were worshiping the Lord and saying, truly, truly, this is the son of God. So when we are, uh, as, as, as we go further in this text, let us just remember that we can't be hesitant. Amen. We can't doubt Jesus did raise from the dead. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And so as we just continue on in our Christian journey, we have got to understand that doubt and fear do not mix in kingdom building. Amen? What God has called us to do. So the last time these disciples had seen Jesus was, you know, at the crucifixion or, or, or during his trial, uh, and they took off. They were like, Oh, oh, a cat of nine tails? I mean, they saw him getting whipped. They saw him getting beat. They saw him getting dragged from judgment hall to, to judgment hall. And they just, they just deuced out. They're like, 
yeah, I'm out of here, you know? And a lot of times when things get hard for us and we don't want the persecution, we don't want people talking about us, we don't, we don't, want, we don't know how to handle the weight uh, of, of, of what, is, what is God has called us to, that they left. And so it was, it was just, you know, human nature for them to, to, uh, to kind of maybe be embarrassed, like, oh, this was truth. He is here. I'm so embarrassed because I didn't, you know, I took off. Like, I didn't went into my garage, got my tackle, got, got my fishing gear out, cleaning my nets because, you know, I'm like, oh, this is a wrap. Let me get back to doing what I do. So they were embarrassed. There might have been some embarrassment, um, but that was just, that's just human nature to, 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 to wander. But Jesus tells them, tells those, those, the women to make, to tell them to come to Galilee because I'm risen and I'm ready to give them their next assignment. So my point one is Jesus conquering the grave gives the believer, us the believers, the, the authority to establish God's kingdom on earth. Amen? Jesus conquering the grave gives us the authority to establish God's kingdom on earth. And so that is in Matthew 28 and 18, where it reads, it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Understand that word, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. In other words, I am now the resurrected Christ. Amen. I am the savior of this world. I am the forgiver of your sins. I have gone and done what my father has commissioned me to do. And now I want to commission you as the, my disciples to go forth and do what you need to do. And I've done all, he, he, Jesus did all the groundwork for us. Amen. To give us the authority to establish his kingdom on earth. Christ has been given all authority on heaven and earth. Jesus has conquered hell, death, and the grave. Amen. And he is resurrected with all power in his hands. Isn't that something to worship God about this morning? Amen. So the scope of what, what Jesus was telling these disciples might have kind of went over, over their heads a, a little bit. So I want you just to observe uh, the scope that he has given them. He's saying that, you know, you have all authority in heaven and in earth to proclaim me, to proclaim my name. So Jesus is now telling them that they have dominion over heaven and earth. Uh, and his and his returning uh, will come soon when he returns to establish his kingdom. But right now he's saying, I'm going to give the power that is within me. I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to release that to you. I'm establishing you, you 11 disciples. I'm establishing you to take this to the next level. Amen. I'm establishing you to be able to walk in the authority as I did. They, they saw his life. They were his disciples. They saw what he did. They saw the persecution. They saw the miracles. They saw the healing. They had a full scope of the power of Jesus Christ. And now the Lord is telling them, I am giving this power to you. I am giving you what you need to establish kingdom here on earth. And so uh, it wasn't just a little bit of power, but it was all power. He says, I give you all power. The authority is not in our might. It's not in our will, but it's, it, it is within the Christ that lives within us. And so many times, because we don't understand that power that God gives us, we don't understand who we really are in Christ. We kind of scoot back. We kind of take back and, and, and just wait for God to move. But God is saying, the movement is within you. If you ignite the power that is within you, you have the authority, amen? You have the power, you have the might to go and make disciples of men. So here at, at Restoration, we're going to get into to, to some serious discipleship, amen? Some building up of the kingdom. I'm just so proud and so happy of, of all the baptisms that we've had within these last few months. And we're going to continue 
to, to witness and continue to be the mouthpiece so that more can come into this kingdom. So Jesus is telling them and giving them the authority uh, over Satan and over Satan's domain, domain. He's saying, yeah, he's here. The enemy is here. He ain't going nowhere. But you have power over him. You have the power to overthrow him. You have the power to do all that I have within you. And it's not, it's not out of your own power, but it's in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's in the power of the Christ that lives within us. So the results of Jesus' authority <clears throat> is his kingdom has now been extended in the earthly realm. So the scope of kingdom uh, or the scope of God's domain, it doesn't only reside here in RCF. It, it, it resides all over the world, all over this continent. And a lot of times, sometimes we get so stuck on, you know, God, what would you have me to do? Lord, you said, you know, go into all the world. Lord, I don't have the money to, to, to fly to nations and preach the gospel and share, share your love. And God is saying, you don't understand my authority. My authority rests right here at RCF. My authority is not you just coming and sitting Sunday morning after Sunday morning and hearing a word. There is dominion and authority for you to go work in children's ministry. There's dominion and power in you to go and, and come out on the uh, come out and help in our safe outdoor spaces. There's dominion for you to get involved in youth. There's dominion for you to be a witness right here in this house. There's dominion. This is your house. This is your place of worship. As as disciples we should be out preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, inviting our co-workers, inviting our neighbors, inviting our families into God's kingdom that rests here at RCF. We limit ourselves and think when we read this passage of scripture that, you know, into all the world, yes, all the world is right here. All the world is in your neighborhood. Amen. All the world is in your household that God is calling us to be disciples and to go. God is telling us to go into all the world. Go into the cities, the highways, the byways. Amen. Go into your teenager's room that always got the, lock, the, got the door locked and think they grown. Amen. And tell them you come into church. Amen. I have authority over you and you will be coming to church. When I was growing up, there was no way on God's earth. <laughs> that I would not be sitting in church on a Sunday morning. I mean, clothes pressed on Sunday night, hair rolled up and ready to roll out the house. You know, we have to take charge of what God has put in charge over us, amen? And it says, therefore, go and build my kingdom. We have kingdom building to do right in our homes, amen, in our schools. We got to quit coming to worship and being a doubter, coming to worship and crying over the situations that we have control over. God is saying that you have control over those situations. You have dominion over those situations. So we've got to learn to tap into the power that is within us. Amen. Like I said, as a child growing up, I wish I would. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can feel the slap coming across my face right now. Uh, me telling my mom, I, I don't want to go to church. You know, I'm going to take a son. I, I don't want to do that. No. My parents were the authority over the house, just like you're the authority over your house. And you can come in with your lips poked out if you want to. You're going to get them slapped back in by Dorothy Jones. Amen. But it was, it, was, it was taking dominion. And we have to be like that in the spirit realm. Just slap the enemy out of your face and say, I have dominion over this situation. Amen. So point two is that God's kingdom is honored. When believers understand and they have been commissioned by God to go and make disciples of all people. That is in verse 19. It says, go for and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have been commissioned. Amen. We have been commissioned to go and make disciples. So in the making of disciples, God is just telling us, that it involves, it says to go and make disciples. To go means that there's some action, amen? That, you know, we just can't, we can't just pray a disciple, you know, pray over a disciple and bring them into, in, into existence. But God says, I need you to go. I need you to, to put one foot in front of the other, 
Amen. I need you to speak. I need you to develop a relationship. I need you to go and begin to make disciples. So in our going, as we are going, as we are, are being a witness, as our own lives are being reflected, people are watching us and they're saying, what is it about that person? The, the to go means that as we are on our way, as we are moving and going about, that we are making disciples. Everything we do should be a reflection of the Spirit of God. And so just, I just challenge you this week, you know, sometimes you might see your neighbor, you know, and, and this is this is a, a terrible thing about a garage because we open up the garage, we see our neighbor, we wave, and we close the garage. <coughs> That's pretty much the only interaction that we have. But God is saying, go, amen? Invite him for coffee. Just, just, just make, you know, go beyond the hello. Get to know them. Let them know that, you know, hey, you know, I'm your neighbor. I've been living here seven years. What's your name? <laughs> you know, that's pitiful. <laughs> but draw a relation. Begin to build a relationship with them and begin to get to know them. You know, it's a beautiful thing that all of my neighbors, I know them all very well. And um, when one of, them, one of our neighbors, uh, he got really sick and uh uh, we were, Pastor and I were st sitting outside and he came over and he, with just tears in his eyes and he says, you know, I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And he says, and I'm scared, but I know that you all are Christians, he says, and I just am asking you to pray for me. And uh, we prayed for him and, and we talked to them, you know, and just gave him the confidence that he needed. And he is now a believer, amen? Amen. And I was... <laughs> I was just over his house last Saturday. Uh, their son graduated from college, and we just had the best time just sitting there talking and reminiscing and, you know, just, you know, him building up my faith and saying, you know, if anything you need, you know I'm here. And, and many times I've called him over and asked him, you know, to, just, to help me with some things. But when you grow a relationship, when you walk in a godly manner, people will notice that. People will notice it, and when they, when they fall into hard times, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be the go-to person. And so God was saying to, to go. He was telling his disciples, go and make disciples. Go and, and, and allow people to see the life that you've lived. Amen? Many of them had been with Jesus on this journey. They had seen that they had, they had walked. Many of them had healed. They had done things, and he's like, don't let my teaching fall in vain. Go, go into all the world and teach the gospel, making disciples, amen? <clears throat> so the life the disciples uh, were now going to be living was a little different, you know, as many of them thought that they would return to what they knew to do. But now they have this attachment to Jesus, amen? This, this Savior that has resurrected, this Savior that uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees thought that they had taken care of, he says, now you, you're the many Jesuses, amen? You're the, you're, you're the ones that are going to lead, uh, lead this effort, and you are the ones that are going to, be, to build kingdom on this earth. So we must make disciples. So... Um, even in this, he says, all people are a target, amen? All, there's no one that is not a target of becoming a kingdom citizen. All, 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 all people um, are being, he wants us to commission all people to come to know who Jesus is, to have a relationship, to build God's kingdom. He's saying that I give you authority in all nations, I give you authority on your job. I give you authority in the marketplace. I give you authority everywhere you step. You carry the anointing, and you are able to change the lives of people. And so as Christians, as born-again believers, we have to understand the power that is within us, that we have all we need, amen, living inside of us, this great Holy Spirit that lives with, with inside us does not limit us to a certain race, does not limit us <coughs> to a certain class, but God says go into all of the world. And we have such a beautiful opportunity even on our campus to minister to those that are just in, 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 on some tough times, amen. It doesn't mean that, you know, oh, mm, no, nah, Lord, I, mm -mm, I just can't. 
you know, that's a lot of right. Mm, I just, I, 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 I'm sick of these people sitting on the corner, Lord, begging for money. I'm sick of, you know, going out of church and getting hit up for $20. And, you know, Lord, I, 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 I just, I can't, I don't know how to relate to them. And God is saying that there's a spirit in God, of God within you that can relate. You don't have to necessarily give them money. You can give them something greater than money. Amen. You can give them the love of Jesus. You can say, hey, would you like, you know, I don't, I, I don't have cash on me, but if you would like to go to lunch with me, I'll take you out and get you a hot meal, you know, and just begin the, all the ways and intricacies that we can just begin to develop and build relationship to bring people to the kingdom of God. So the process of discipleship is just simply just creating places for people to belong, believe, and behave. It's creating an atmosphere that is inviting to this world, amen? And that's what we seek to do, is make, make disciples, amen, to open up our arms and open up our doors and just begin to incorporate what Jesus did with those, with those disciples. He, he, let, he allowed them to come into his, his, his realm, and he just let them know that you belong here. You know, and I'm going to, I, I, and I want you to just believe. And it took a little bit of time, but they begin to believe as he began to teach. And then their, their behavior began to change because they begin to see the power of God within him. So they belong, they believe, those disciples belong, those disciples believed, and those type, that disciples be, be, behaved. And they begin to understand that, you know what, this is about kingdom. And that's what Jesus was saying. I'm getting ready to leave. But I'm going to give you the power to continue on. And because we stand here today with that same power, amen, within us to go and create disciples. So, church, we got to get back on, we got to get back on point, amen. As I was saying, Coach Malone said, look here, we got a couple of more games to pull this off, okay? And we, we need to get in. And I'm sure he, he rallied his team together and he said, we can do this. And I'm standing before you with the power of the almighty God saying, we can do this, amen? We can reestablish kingdom. We can reestablish our love for God. We can reestablish RCF to be the church that God has called. Amen. We don't have to be the church with the bells and the whistles and all of this and that. We need to be the church that is out there reaching our city, reaching our neighborhoods, <coughs> reaching our children, and bringing them into a saving knowledge and of Christ. God tells us to go, amen, whatever shape or form that looks like, that we are to go and create disciples and make disciples. God has commissioned us. So my last point is that the presence of the Holy Spirit guarantees the believer protection when penetrating the enemy's camp with the message of the gospel. The presence of the Holy Spirit guarantees the believer protection when, it, when we penetrate the enemy's camp with the message of the gospel. Verse, verse 20 says, teaching them to, desert, to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. God is with us to the end of the age. Amen. I remember as a child, my mother if there was ever a door knocking witnesser, that was my mother. She, she just loved it. And so as kids, she would take us along and she would just random, take a random neighborhood, get out the car and just go street witnessing, door knocking. And I would just be like, yeah, we don't know these people, you know? <laughs> as a child, I'm just like, you know, I don't know these people. But uh, she was mentored by uh, our neighbor. This is, it started in Japan when we were in Japan. She was mentored by Miss Sullivan, a strong Christian woman who taught my mother uh, the witness of, of just knocking on doors and street witnessing. And, uh, you know, we did that the whole time we were there. We did it when we came back to America. And I just always thought, this is so odd. You know, and she, my mother would be like, so if there are children in the house, then you go and you witness to the children. Huh? <laughs> you know? And so, but it really taught me not to be afraid. It really taught me to understand that the power of Jesus was with, worked through my mother. She had brought so many souls to Christ just by just building that relationship with them, just talking to them, talking to our neighbors. That's why, you know, at, at our house, 
I mean, we were just the house on the block because everybody knew that my mother had a heart for God, that she loved people and she loved them. So when circumstances and situations would come up, my mom would be the go-to person. And it really taught us as as her children, as her little disciples, to just be able to trust people and to put your heart out there, even at times when it gets hurt. God is God will protect you, amen? And God is telling them, and behold, I am with you always, even until the end of this earth. When, when you know, anytime uh, we, we, we read that passage of scripture, we have to know in a certainty, God is with us, amen? And just like my mother, you know, if, if my mother said a commandment, oh, it got done. Your mom said, when I get home, oh, this kitchen better be clean. Guess what? That kitchen was clean. Now, there were times when, you know, we would be watching the Flintstones. <coughs> we'd be watching Tom and Jerry, you know, we'd get caught up and stuff. And she would walk in that, we'd hear that garage, or we would hear that car pull up and pew! We were, you know, we were just trying to get done what, what she called us to do. But my mother had a certain authority. Her voice meant something. And so when she gave a commandment, we were obedient because back in my day, there was, if you, if she walked in the house and the kitchen was dirty, she'd just look at you and say, go out, go out, go get me a switch. You know, not, no, no conversation, no, you know, mom, I fell asleep, mom, I don't feel good, go get me a switch. You know, and she would correct us. And we need to, we need to understand that, you know, her, her, her voice was authority. Her voice held, held uh, it held some character with what she said went. And so God is saying to us that I'm giving you the same authority. I'm going to release the same authority that but Jesus has this here on earth in you. Do you know we have the authority, amen, we have the authority to walk in kingdom and create kingdom here on earth. So as, as, as we move forth, the word today is just go, amen. Go, take the authority that is within you. It may be dormant, it may be dusty. You might need to call someone and say, okay, I'm going to take someone out to lunch today, or I'm going to do this. Or Brother, sister, can you just, just help me with some passages of Scripture? Help me to open up my spiritual ear and really hear what's going on in the lives of others. We have the authority to go, amen. We have the protection of the King of kings and the Lord of lords to go into all the nations, amen, to be kingdom citizens, to, to reach out and move and change this situation that's going on in our world. When we look at the world today, we see that we are in the end times. We see that, you know, the things that are happening, that Jesus is soon going to return. We hear, we don't hear of rumors and wars. We are in the middle of rumors, of, you know, of wars and conflict, that we are coming into the end time, that there is famine across the land. There's hatred across the land. There's all things, all kinds of things that are going on. And as, as Christians, we got to stand up and say, you know what? My main goal for being birthed on this earth was to create disciples. It was to build God's kingdom. God's, this, this is the commission, the great commission. Go ye therefore into all the world and teach the gospel and teach people, amen? Bring people to a saving knowledge. Jesus came and set the groundwork for us, amen? Because of his love and his mercy and his grace, he saw that man had sinned and that man was losing the battle. And so he took off of his, he took off his heavenly clothes and came to earth to be an example for us and to help establish us here on earth. He's done his part. He's made, he's, he's, he's put down the ground. And now it is our part to build his kingdom because he's going to return, amen? He's coming back, and he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's not looking for an empty church. He's looking for a house full of kingdom citizens, and that is our responsibility, to create 
kingdom citizens, amen, to build up this world because he's coming with a new heaven and a new earth, amen? And all he's commissioned us to do is to walk in obedience, follow his precepts, be citizens of this world, be fine citizens of this world, and bring people into a saving knowledge of God so that when he comes and he resets us, amen, when he resets this earth to reflect heaven and earth, that we are part of the building up of his kingdom. So, you know, don't be so concerned about what people are saying and what people are doing, but... As you engage in enemy warfare, just know you win, amen? That you've already won, hallelujah. That you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Stick your chest up, let yesterday go, let worries and gossips and concern go and say, you know what? God has commissioned me to bring people into this kingdom. God has commissioned me to help grow this earthly kingdom of his, to take control of his earthly kingdom. And no matter what you've been through, no matter how the enemy has come at you, you still have the authority of the Lord Jesus himself to be commissioned to go ye therefore and make disciples. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> So we have some work to do, hallelujah. We have some work to do to build up God's kingdom, to build up his army, amen, to build up all that he has because he's coming back. We all know that. And I don't want him to catch me clowning around or, or depressed or, or, you know, in a woe is me position. <coughs> But I want him to see that I am about the Father's business, and that's what we need. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Amen, amen. What a, what a great commission the Lord has put upon us. And the thing is that it's, it's manageable, amen. It's possible. I could imagine those disciples were... <coughs> afraid and in wonderment because the tangible Jesus was leaving them <clears throat> but the spirit of the almighty was within them the spirit that helps us <clears throat> day to day the spirit that gives us the empowerment lives within us so this morning we're going to open up this altar amen <clears throat> we ask that our elders would come and maybe, maybe you just need a touch from the Lord this morning, amen. Maybe you need to just rededicate your life. Maybe your heart's desire is to preach the gospel, is to, to be that neighbor, to be that friend, to help make disciples, to build God's kingdom up. But life has weighed you down. Circumstances have made you doubt. You don't need to doubt anymore. We just ask that you just rededicate your life to Jesus this morning. And just know that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords loves you deeply. <laughs> that he dreams of you at night, that he sings over you, that he loves you and wants to see the best for you. So this morning as we offer this precious gift of Jesus Christ unto you. Maybe you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. You can come this morning and receive him. You can come this morning and rededicate yourself this morning. You can come this morning, amen, and be encouraged to just make that step and go and go and go and go, amen, because God has given you the ability to do so. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, we bless your name this morning. Father, we thank you that you have chosen us to be a kingdom citizen. Father God, that you are reestablishing your kingdom here on earth, and you're doing it through us, God. Doing it through your people. 
So Lord, I just pray this morning that this word has penetrated hearts, Father God, that where there is doubt, Lord, there is now light shining, Father God. The light of your word that people understand that I have the ability that they have defeated the enemy, Father God, that they are a kingdom citizen, Lord, that their diplomatic rights, Father God, are in action, Lord, that as a kingdom citizen, they have all authority, Lord, to take over, Father God, to bring people to a place of belonging, believing, and behaving, and to build up your kingdom. So God, we thank you this morning, Lord, and we bless you. God, we can't thank you enough, Lord, for this ministry, Father God, for all that you're doing, Lord, for the steps that we are taking, Father God, to be lovers of you, God, and to be lovers of each other. So God, we ask that you continue to bless us, Father God, and teach us in our going, God, that it's all about you. In our going, it's about kingdom, God. In our going, it's about salvation, Father God. In our going, it's about witnessing, Father God. Because we want to upbuild your kingdom. We want to upbuild this house so that the manifested glory of the Lord reigns in this place. So we thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, amen. <clears throat> you may be seated as we get ready to close out service this morning, amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We just want to thank you for uh, just your continued commitment to RCF in your tithes and in your offerings. If you did not get an opportunity to give, you can do so as you exit the building. Or if you're online, you can also use our giving platforms to give. We thank you so much, amen, for all that you all are doing to keep, keep restoration, amen, moving forward in all that God has us to do. Great things are coming. Amen. I believe Sister Kathy.